Hi guys, welcome to the BHCS 2004 Histology Staining Practical. In this particular one, we take a look at the practical applications, the staining, to back up all the theory that you've done beforehand. We're going to do two stains on this first session. The hematoxylin and eosin architectural stain, pink and purple goodness, and we're also going to do the Alcyon Blue Paz, which is a specific stain for carbohydrates. So the first thing you need to be aware of when you're doing any kind of histology staining is gloves, lab coat. Because these are originally textile stains, anything that gets on your clothes is going to stay there. And particularly, Schiff's reagent will stain your fingertips a very, very interesting shade of insoluble pink if you get it on your hands. So make sure you're wearing your gloves and your lab coat. The first thing you do in order to get staining is to take your section, make sure that it's melted onto the slide, write your name or some kind of identifying feature on the side that you are going to do the staining. Otherwise, you're going to wind up staining the wrong side and you'll wipe it off. Once that's done, you need to remove all that paraffin wax that's on there and put it into an aqueous medium. And to do that, we do it over here. I've got a slightly different setup to you from the ones which you'll have, but the reagents are the same. So I've got baths of xylene, you'll be using histoline. And the xylene will remove the paraffin wax. So I've started one off already, and it's been sitting in these two for about 10 minutes, just because I've got the time to do it. Really all you need to do is make sure that your section is completely de-waxed. When you lift it out of the water, there should be no residual paraffin wax at all on the slide, which will appear as a very pale, um, well, wax-like thing. So once it's in there, I can take that one out of the histoline, and then I put it into the alcohol. Alcohol removes the histoline, and this is the second step you need in going down to water. You'll also notice that when in histoline, you can't see your section terribly well. But once you put it in alcohol, it comes out very noticeably. And that's why histoline is called a clearing agent. So you whiz through your alcohols a fairly good little speed because most of the wax has been removed. A few gentle oscillations in there, nice and slow, up and down. Histology, remember, is the Tai Chi of science. Everything is done really slow, really gentle, and it's very, very forgiving. Once you reach your last alcohol, it can go straight into the water. Now, the first thing we need to do is thinking about timings. The AB Paz takes about 15 minutes in Alcyon Blue. So that's 15 minutes when you'll be sitting twiddling your thumbs, wondering what you can get on with. That's why we're going to divide this up into two distinct staining protocols done at the same time. So I'll start off with the Alcyon Blue, because it is the longest part of the whole protocol. So I'll pop it in. And I'll just simply make sure your slide is always wet, drain off any water, and I'll flood it with Alcyon Blue. And that's all there is to it on that front. Drown it in Alcyon Blue, and then leave it alone. That means I can now turn my attention to the other stains I've got to concern myself about, namely the hematoxylin and eosin. And I'm going to do this one very rapidly, the same way I would do it as a frozen section in the hospital. That's the case where the patient's sitting on an operating table, usually with a hole in their chest, and not particularly keen on having it remain there. So we'll stain this section start to finish in round about five minutes. The protocols will say do it longer, absolutely. Um, I've got the experience to do it this way, but the longer you leave it, the better the quality of the staining, which is really what you're after. So just tidying up because I like clean. The first step in an H&E is of course the H, the hematoxin. I'll drop it in there and I'll just set it up and down a little bit gentle agitation helping that reaction speed along and that will sit in there for probably about a minute so by the time i finish talking to you about what hematoxylin does namely it stains dna hair any negatively charged molecule um, this particular molecule this stain sorry will be ready to come out so remember h and e pink and purple architectural stain um, and it's used just to give you an idea of what is happening. So in a frozen section, for instance, all the clinician is concerned about is, I have a piece of tissue, is it malignant? Is it not malignant? They don't need to know what it is just yet. Once you get more experience and you become super hot like me, then you can cut really, really thin frozen sections of tissue at three microns and you are just the business at that point. 
So it goes into the hematoxylin. Hematoxylin here, you'll note the colour. For the wine aficionados among you, it's a good deep burgundy red. Um, for the colour blind in you, it could be red, it could be grey. Sorry, not being colour blind, I can't really help you. But I reckon that that's been in there long enough. So I take this one out, but before I do, I'm just going to show you. Note the colour. It's that deep red, almost like Vimto red. Goes into your slide rack, back into your water. Now when I take this out, you'll see what I mean. Get a quick wash. It's that kind of red colour. Now as I told you before, hematoxin is purple. What are you talking about, Paul? This is now pink, but red. So I drop it into acid alcohol, just a few drops, and this strips out excess hematoxylin. So you note the colour now, it's very, very pink. I'll show you in a second, I just want to make sure it's all off. So, woohoo! There you go, it's now very, very pink. So, okay Paul, where are you going with this? Now I employ my cheat step, lithium carbonate. It simulates hard tap water. Now watch the colour on there. You see how it goes from pink to purple. And once it hits that purple colour, you are done. That is all there is to it. Nothing scientific. Has it gone purple? If the answer to that question is yes, it's good to come out. The last step we need to do is the Eersin one. Now Eersin is incredibly messy. So make sure that when you're playing around with it, you keep it well contained and treated with respect. This stuff goes everywhere and it stains everything. So your favorite lab coat, bright pink, ta-da! Um, bench stays, pink, everything pink. I've been waffling on at you for just a few seconds. Strangely enough, that is perfectly sufficient time to stain this up. That molecule is so small, it zips into your tissue and it's good to go. So I'm gonna whip that one out. Woohoo! Straight into my water bath, and you'll notice he's still kicking around. He's doing nothing at all. I'm not bothered by him in the slightest. Out that comes, and you'll see here, it's pink and it's purple. Wunderbar. The next thing you will do then is go through your ethanols very quickly, because you don't need much, like that, through to there, and then into your xylene. And what you have to do is make sure this is done very slowly, very gently. You don't want any white opaque parts there. Once it looks like that, you're ready to cover slip and we'll do that right at the end. So now our hematoxylin and eosin slide is done and it's just sitting in the xylene, chilling out, having a good time. I could leave it there, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Now I can turn my attention to the next part of the protocol, the AB PAS and its associated PAS stain. So over here is the Alcyon Blue. It's been sitting around minding its own business. What I'm going to do now is just drain that all off, give it a good wash. And here's a good tip for you. When you wash a slide, turn it upside down, wash the back, and capillary action comes underneath, cleans the slide really nice and gentle. You're left with a bit of tissue with some nice, very delicate blue staining. Once that's there, I'll flood it with water just to make sure everything is kept wet and I'll bring up the reserves. Here is my PAS stain. Now this one has just been sitting in water as well. All I'm going to do now is stain it with the 1% shifts. So all I will do, get some shifts. For your one, you'll just simply pop it straight into your little slide holder. Drain the water off and flood both slides with shifts reagent. You won't see any colour change with shifts. That's all you need to do. Leave that alone for the next five minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. Um, we've had our time now, so the next step. Really nice and easy, you just drain the slides again, like that, and now I'll introduce shifts reagent into this. For those of you of a happy persuasion, uh, take a sniff of the shifts, it's ammonia based, it'll blow the back of your head off. Don't do it, it's a health and safety issue. Um, do it, don't do it. So that's all I'm gonna do with this, is put it in shifts reagent, and then just leave it for about another five to 10 minutes. 
Okay guys, so it's been wallowing in Shift's reagent quite happily. And you can tell when Shift's is starting to work, when you look at your section, it's got a very, very faint pink. Almost like um, when you've been out in the sun, for instance, you've got very fair skin, you go very, very pink there. So what I'll do is I'm gonna load it up into a staining rack, drain off the reagent, both my PAS and my AB PAS, because it's the same step. And then as I put it in here, you'll see an almost immediate color change to the water, how it goes pink. And that's the Schiff's reagent at work. So you just simply give it a good wash. And now, if you check out your slide, you'll see it's got a faint pink and blue to it for the AB PAS. For the PAS on its own, you won't have that blue and it just looks pink. Now, that's highlighted all the various mucins you need to see, but we want to make sure you can see all the cellular structures too, to give context. So to do that, we simply do a little hematoxylin counter stain to show all the nuclei. And this is pretty much exactly the same as you do the hematoxylin and eosin. So it goes from there into your hematoxylin. Just let it chill out there for a little while. While it's chilling there, I'll tell you a little bit about the AB PAS. So Alcyon Blue will pick up particularly any kind of um, sulfated mucin, carbohydrate. So it will stain goblet cells in the intestine, the mucin producing cells in the bronchus, for instance. It's a very good stain for helping you work out, um, do you have a metastatic colon spread, for instance, a metastatic colon cancer spread, sorry. It'd be rather odd if your colon was just randomly spreading. Um, and it can stain that bright blue um, in areas where it shouldn't be, you can argue, yes, there's some kind of acid mucin producing metastasis here. The PAS part stains all other carbohydrates. So it will pick up, for instance, in these rat sections, the, so the um, cellulose cell wall of the plant food that it last ate. It will stain up neutral mucins, so you get those in the small intestine. It will stain epithelial cells, the carbohydrate residues as well, so the membranes will come up pink. It stains the basement membranes. If you remember, think back to the talks we had about basement membranes and renal diseases. It picks up fungal hyphae. Very good, very fast and dirty stain just to show you, hey, have you managed to pick up an aspirillogosis, for instance, within the lung or something in the skin? So that's been in the hematoxylin enough time. I'm gonna whip it out and I'll rattle through this very, very quickly because it's exactly the same. So when you see here now, there's your PAS. It's very dark purple. We're not particularly keen on that. So I need to strip out the excess dye called regressive staining. It goes in the acid alcohol, just a couple of dunks. Turns it light pink. Back in we go. Then I come out and I go into the lithium carbonate just to turn everything the correct shade of blue. We take that out. Give that a wash and we're in the home stretch now. All we're going to do now is take that from its water back through the alcohols to the xylene again. There we go. And you can do this part fairly quickly. It doesn't need to be very long like when you're de-waxing because here you're removing very small molecules of water, very small molecules of ethanol into the larger molecules of xylene. So it works much, much quicker. Into the first xylene, Make sure you've got all that alcohol off so your slide is nice and clear. And then into the next one. And finally, me, into the last one over here. Now, that can stay there um, for as long as you need it to be or until the cover slipping process, which is the bit we're going to cover just in a second. Right, it's time now to put the final touches to your staining, and that is putting the cover slip on. Cover slipping is often made out to be this quite difficult thing, and in reality, it should be fast, it should be slick. So I'm gonna show you the professional way of cover slipping that avoids any kind of damage to the tissue and makes you look uber good. So here's the equipment I've got. I've got three cover slips because I've got three slides, and I might add them in black just to show you where I've put them. My slides remain in their little histaline or xylene bath. I want to keep them soaked. And I've got DPX, which is a xylene-based mountant, so it and the xylene will mix. That comes in very useful for the next part. So all I'm going to do is throw something on the ground, and then 
get some DPX and I'll put a line of it straight down the middle just like this no mess no fuss single line and I'll take a slide I'll rest the bottom of the slide against the bottom of the cover slip let's put it that way around finger at the back to stop it sliding backwards rest it down like that touch and flick it back over and that is all you do section bottom of the slide finger touch bring back that lifts the cover slip with the section and the weight of the cover slip then gently spreads out the mounting medium and everything comes out really nicely there they are they're now cover slipped give them a few seconds wipe the bum with a bit of tissue paper and take a look at them under the microscope